Uh, let me welcome you to the lecture number 27 in drilling and blasting technology course. Uh, we will continue our uh, topic uh, explosive storage from the last lecture and uh, in the last lecture we have discussed uh, the classification of explosive and the how the license for storing the explosive for setting up a magazine can be obtained either from the uh, chief controller of the explosive or from the regional controller of the ex explosive. Uh, it has also been found uh, that the licensing process for setting up a magazine is lengthy and difficult also, especially you have to take the consent of the local people as the public hearing is there and NOC has to be obtained from the district, uh, district authority. Uh, apart from that a number of administrative offices are also involved particularly say in mining say, uh, cases where you are trying to use ANFO, emulsion, slurry or locks uh, it's as it comes under the explosive manufacturing. Not only the controller of explosives permission is required apart from that director general of mine safety's permission is also required. So, it makes uh, number uh, involvement of the number of administrative officers makes the uh, processes a little bit complex. However, uh, we are now standing at a position to discuss about the details of the constructional uh, uh, nitty gritty of the magazine. So, our learning objective remains same from the last class we understand the importance of storing, understand the constructional design, understand the different types of magazine, understand the guideline of keeping the explosive inside the magazine. So, learning objectives are same. So, like every class let us observe this video. In this video, uh, it is showing all the uh, how the magazine is set, what is the they are in the nearby position, how the fencings are made. So, these are shown and inside how the construction is there uh, that is also uh, they are inside uh, inside this. Well, well, well this is Coaster, this Zeke, video. Coaster Zeke's videos and today uh, for the pyros out there we are going to be talking about uh, fireworks storage, you know maybe some ideas that maybe not everybody's thought about. Anyway, here is the grounds around here. Just, uh, as you can see it's very early spring and nothing's greened up here. It's been abnormally cold winter, abnormally cold spring, so we aren't going to be lighting any fireworks anytime soon. Look at all that dry grass. We want to impress the fire department very much if we lit off some fireworks and set all that ablaze. So it's kind of looking around the grounds there. There's the four wheel trails. That's also where I do my running. That's my latest little hobby from what I took up last fall there. Did a couple mud runs. Uh, you gotta be careful doing some of those obstacles. It can rupture a nut sack. You know, you you don't wanna you don't wanna do that. You know, you end up hurting yourself down there. You gotta, you gotta be careful. You know, you won't wanna lose them because you know then you'd have to give up running and take up cycling. You'd probably end up being disqualified for, from your sport for using performance enhancing drugs and you know it'd just be a bad deal. So anyway, well, that's pretty much the grounds there. Enough on all that nonsense, I guess. But anyway, there's a fireworks magazine. We're, today we're going to be talking about a Type 4 storage magazine. And this one is just in the process of being approved. I have a federal license for doing the 1.3 or what a lot of people call Class B professional grade fireworks. And that's what that is. So within a few days, a week or two, it got sent in with my renewal form. So up to this point I've had to rely on a contingency letter that means you can buy you can buy the class B stuff but then you have to shoot it off that day so if you get rained out or something comes up you can't shoot it off <clears throat> you have to have whoever you buy from has to have uh, you have to have an agreement with them that you can bring the stuff back there until you can use it so you can't store it unless you have ATF approved storage so that's what that is but just real quickly without spending too much time and I know this is just a flip video. I was going to get the GoPro out, but haven't really gotten the attachments for, for that yet. So, uh, you see, you got to have gravel all the way around it. Probably put a little bit more around it. But everything is covered up the way that the agent would want it to be. So, if they, in fact, come out and look at it. So, they'll probably just check it out the next time they come out to see me, which is about once every three years, something like that however that works but anyway getting back to this now this is for a professional uh, fireworks storage however 
something to consider. I do see on YouTube that there's a lot of uh, fireworks enthusiasts, young pyros out there, whatever, doing these stash videos. And they have a lot of cases of canister shells and 500 gram cakes and, you know, consumer fireworks, 1.4 grade. But still, a lot, a lot of flammable stuff and a lot of, you know, there's plenty of power there and everything. Uh, and what they maybe don't realize is that their homeowner's insurance would be null and void in the cases that they had a fire. Uh, and all that stuff went up and it became evident that they had that stuff stored in there. So they might want to consider storage other than in the house. Some options would be an outbuilding, an out storage shed somewhere, something that you could keep locked and also where the fireworks stay dry. Or you can consider something like this, but you're probably not going to do something like this unless you're actually, you know, going for your federal license. At some point, I'll give the pyros out there some info on how you go about doing that for those that want to actually go down that road. But, uh, but anyway, that's what it is. I don't want to spend too much time on it. You can see the padlocks are there on the ground. We took them off just so I can open up the door and it's going to be a whole lot easier than trying to... Because even when they're not locked, they're a pain in the ass to get out of there. So you just imagine if they are locked. That's all up to ATF specs. Yeah, but a piece of work, it'd have a hard, pretty hard time cutting them off with a bolt cutter. So, you know, that's the whole idea of it. But anyway, we'll open it up here. That's what it looks like on the inside. And... Until it's approved, you can't store fireworks in there. Now that's 1.3 professional, of course, but what you can do, however, is store 1.4, you, can see the wood you know, consumer-grade consumer, consumer grade fireworks, what we call Go Class C. One. You have all the Class C fireworks you have in there, which I don't have too many in there, but there's a few things in there to look at, so. Trying to check the time on my camera here, maybe as we get in here a little closer I'm going to see what the time is on my camera because yesterday I went over and that's a little bit of pain in the ass but anyway you can see we got a few little things in here not too much this whole bunch of class B fireworks in it in a month or two be able to show you some real stuff some three inch shells two and a half inch shells maybe some four inch shells you know all kinds of goodies you know but right now it's all we got class C in here there is some uh, some of my favorite shells right there, the Panic Attack by Wind, I got a whole case of those in here. That's the only thing we got a case of right now, so don't keep a lot of fireworks around during the winter time. But that were real good, they came out last year, they're pretty awesome. You know, comparable to the Excals, I suppose. I think the brakes are a little better, I think the special effects are a little bit better. There, and here we have the Black Knight, you won't be able to probably get those anymore because they don't, they aren't, uh, they were in the stores a few years ago and, you know, they, you can't get them anymore. And apparently they were a little overloaded or whatever. They were never pulled off the shelves, but, you know, they weren't allowed back in. At least labeled as 1.4 consumer grade fireworks. So, that's what that is. So, this Got is a little small magazine. cake can, back uh, here. You have observed the uh, constructional details in uh, this and you have seen there is no metallic content. Uh, available in, inside the magazine or in the contact with the explosive and uh, that's why the magazines are built up. We will di discuss all these details in the um, further slides. <coughs> so, as per our requirement, the a magazine can be classified, uh, broadly classified in uh, four types, mode A magazine, portable or mode B magazine. Uh, underground magazine and reserve stations. So, basically magazine can be classified in these four groups and the constructional requirement, permission requirements are different for all these uh, four types of magazines. So, let us discuss about the first uh, magazine that is the first type of magazine that is the mode A magazine. So, mode A magazine is the magazine and this is uh, of very large uh, uh, quantity of uh, uh, the quantity of uh, um, explosive can be stored in this magazine and this type of magazine must be approved, must be approved by the chip controller of explosives and this type of magazine should have walls if it is of reinforced concrete then the concrete wall should have a thickness of 
225 millimeter. If it is of brick stone, in that case it must be of 450 mm thick and this it must have a concrete roof and the reinforced concrete roof layer should have 150 mm thick that means 6 inch thick concrete roofing is required. Uh, and this concrete used here should have a compressive strength of uh, 2500 pound per inch square. All the interiors the benches, shelves, fittings constructed or lined should not have any iron or steel which can come into the contact of explosive. So, all the places the explosive should not come into the contact of iron or steel so that prematurely it can be initiated by the induced current in those. So, that is why you have seen in the video also the in, in the interior the wooden mats are provided so that it gives the insulation to the explosive from the outer uh, concrete or outer uh, iron whichever is available with that. So, this is another important point must be carried out while mode A magazine or any type of magazine are being constructed. One ventilator must be provided or one or more ventilator must be provided into the magazine for ventilating the air inside. So, that heat cannot be accumulated and the gases generated from the explosive must be taken out. So, one ventilator is required uh, in the top and in the side walls. If the capacity of the magazine is less than equal to 500 kg, two or more for the more than 500 kg. And this is the specification of the ventilator and jet shaped ventilators are always wished so that no one can uh, throw any any material inside through the ventilator. So, that is why this is essential requirement of being jet shaped for the ventilators which are used in the mode A magazine. Second uh, the next requirements are the doors, there must be a door to enter into the uh, magazine, the door must open outward. We have also seen in the video the door must open into the outward and it should fit tightly. That means, there should not be any gap between the doors and its frame, so that anyone can, uh, in, uh, can be sent through that gap. So, it should be fit, uh, it should be fitted tightly with the frame. A uh, door must be constructed of steel plate at least 5 mm thick, so that no one can break it easily and should have the internal lining of wood. You have seen in that video the door had the internal lining of wood. So, that is the requirement and the door lock should have a deadlock type. You have seen that door was had the deadlock type, so that no one can easily open the door. A uh, a mode a magazine may have internal door, may not have internal door that is that may be required, may not be required that depends on that. If the internal doors are provided, then the doors should be made of wood and it locks fittings should be of non ferrous material that means, it may be aluminum or something like that it should not have the magnetic property. So, that is why it should be of non ferrous metal must be used for the locks and fittings of that one. So, this is the door you have seen in utmost care is taken so that the steels used in the door should not uh, generate any magnetism for generating electricity or, or immature ignition of the explosive. Sufficient windows must be provided openable windows generally windows are provided so that the light can enter or the for better illumination inside the magazine. 
windows must be openable outward similar to the door and again it must be very strong at least 5 mm steel plate will be there for the window and again the window should have a wooden line, uh, lining so that the plate uh, so that the steel plate will not uh, hinder the immature initiation of the explosive. Say there must be a separate room of storage of detonator and explosive okay, of class 3 class 6 division 3 if stored within the magazine. In fact, if the space is not sufficient then the magazine so different magazine must be there for the explosive and detonators and if in the same magazine explosives are and detonators are kept then the separate room must be there for the detonator and explosive or the significant partition must be there between the detonator and explosive so that the detonator may not initiate the explosion in the explosive. So, because detonators are electric detonators with the stray current it may uh, it may be initiated uh, 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 un, uh, un, unwilling. So, that is the possibilities of detonation of the detonator is uh, uh, more than the explosive, but the effect of the detonator detonation is local. So, it is strongly unwanted that the detonation of the detonator should not prematurely initiate the explosive. If the exp explosion occur in the explosive, then the result will be very, very severe. So, for that for avoiding that we should not keep detonator and the explosive together then the in any accident the explosion will be very high. There must be an internal volume not less than 0.4 meter cube should be kept for 100 kg each 100 kg of explosive. So, for dissipating heat proper ventilation this much of uh, space must be kept for as a free volume for 100 kg of explosive apart from the spaces available for the movement of the person inside the magazine. Uh, now, this is the safety distance, this is the safety distance bar chart it is available in uh, Pradhan's book. So, the schedule 8 schedule 8 states the safety distances in a tabular form which are to observe in the factories licensed for manufacturing of explosive or from the magazine licensed for storage of high explosive. So, these are the magazine capacity sorry these are the magazine capacity these are the internal safe distance these are the outside safe distance and this is the outside safety distance for the railroad, this is outside safety distance for the houses, offices, factories. So, uh, this is if you are having this say uh, magazine capacity is of 2 ton, then the internal safety distance is 31 meter for ZZ category of explosive that means the most uh, dangerous explosive there must be 118 meter safety distance from the road rail uh, like that and there must be 226 meter safe distance is required from the houses offices factories available in the nearby. So, we have to search out a site which following this criteria for setting up a 2 ton capacity of magazine. So, this is the uh, safe distance requirement. this is the safety distance requirement in the mode A magazine. Now, let us look into the portable magazine or mo mode B magazine. So, mode B magazine must be approved by the chip controller of explosive and should have the wall of steel plate. So, these are portable magazine. So, this can be moved uh, from one place to another place. So, that is why this will be made of steel plate of at least 5 mm thick, roof is also of similar 5 mm thick, interior lining must be of 10 mm thick on walls, door ceilings with uh, wood fitting boards or woods as you have observed in the video and there will be no iron or steel exposed 
to, to the interior uh, so that explosive may come in contact with that. And in this type of magazine you must provide 0.65 meter cube of interior space for 100 kgs of explosive. You, you can observe this is little bit higher than uh, the earlier one. The reason is that the it is made of steel plates. So, the inter, internal temperature may arises uh, may be uh, uh, rises more than the uh, concrete uh, uh, type of magazine and maximum volume shall not exceed 2 meter cube uh, in the inside the uh, per 100 kgs of explosive. So, this is the requirement has to be followed for the mode B or portable type of magazine which is made of the steel plates. Uh, again we have to provide the ventilation we have to provide the ventilation uh, by means of vents and these vents should be of adequately protected. So, this type of vents are in general provided so that no one can send anything inside through those vents and that is why inside it, it will be uh, protected. Uh, external hinges of steel welded to the door and to the frame of the magazine uh, that is essentially required. The door should, should be of deadlock type uh, and anti corrosive painting of the exterior is very very important because at is, as it is steel made and subjected to uh, rain water subjected to heat. So, that is why uh, anti uh, corrosive paint coating is essentially required for good conditioning of the steel plate 5 mm steel plate which is used for the construction of this magazine. So, while sitting the portable magazine it has to be uh, on a raised ground it is essentially should be of a raised ground. So, that the rain water cannot enter into the uh, magazine uh, very easily. So, it will be on a raised ground and maintain a minimum safety distance of 95 meter from all houses and buildings and 50 meter from public roads, uh, uh, railway tracks etcetera. So, this portable magazines you can see the safety distances are also specified like mode magazine and also the uh, it, it will be on a raised ground so that rain water cannot come inside and sufficient protective measures from the atmospheric exposure of the magazine must be taken. Now, the third type of magazine which is possible in the underground maga magazine is called magazine underground magazine. As per explosive act and rule there is no provision of underground magazine in India. As per CMR MMR that is the coal mine regulation and metal mine regulation as it is written explosives shall not be stored below ground in a mine except with the approval of in writing of chief inspector of mines and subject to such condition as he may specify therein. Such storage shall be done only in a magazine or magazines duly licensed in accordance with the provision of the rules made under explosive act 1884. So, on analyzing this statement it can be concluded that a mode B type of magazine may be approved by the chief controller of the explosive if it is satisfying the or if, if, if it is satisfying all the conditions and the storage capacity should not exceed the 3 to 4 weeks requirement of that underground mine and this may avoid the issue and return of explosive at the beginning and end of the each shift. So, there are some benefits of having an underground magazine and uh, this is uh, these benefits are also good, but uh, the special permission is required in this case. Uh, as, as per the requirement this underground magazine should have a also an in charge for the three shifts. 
but the benefit is that pilferage of the explosive in end route in the underground if you are having an underground magazine is eliminated because in surface the magazines are at a longer distance where the free spaces are available then the explosive is coming then entering into the underground for being used. So, this transportation distance is long for the explosive and pilfering chances are very high. In fact, a number of cases uh, looting of uh, explosive has occurred in India also pilfering of explosive in between is also happened. So, that can be eliminated. So, and this will also allowing that instead of carrying explosive in every shift that means issuing of explosive uh, at the beginning of the shift from here carrying that manually to the underground this uh, these are being eliminated. So, the safety requirement safety uh, standard will become high because the manual handling of the explosive is, is, is being reduced in the if you are having an underground magazine. So, the requirement could be transport through the, uh, uh, on weekly rest days uh, thus explosive cannot be uh, 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 on weekly rest days the explosive may be transferred from the uh, uh, surface to the underground and kept in the uh, kept in the underground that time no one is no one is there in the cage. So, it is creating a safe better safer uh, 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 condition of using explosive. So, having an uh, underground magazine gives us some benefit. Uh, reserve station is also another type of storage place very very temporary this is very very temporary storage place of explosive in the underground. The places in the underground working identified by the manager for the purpose of keeping temporary storing of explosive. That means, uh, if there is no underground magazine the explosive is taken from the surface then through cage the explosives are transferred to the underground this is the manual carrying of the explosive or maybe explosive is carried in a approved type of boxes. Then before sending them to the blasting phase say so this is the blasting phase where it is supposed to be used. So, before sending it up to that because some machine may be under operation they are uh, may be drilling is carried out there. So, in that case the temporary storing of the explosive is required and there must be a reserve station where these explosives are kept for the temporary storage till the phase is become clear for transferring the explosive to the blast phase then blast at the at that place and taking out the uh, rest explosive to the surface. So, this temporary storing place of the explosive is called the reserve station and the reserve station must be identified by the manager. This must be identified by the manager and mark it as the reserve station. This reserve station must be frequently visited by the work personnel so that pilfering of the explosive cannot be done. Roof must be dressed properly there should not be any overhang so that that will fall on the explosive and uh, give the uh, shock for the premature blasting of the explosive. Second is that it must be white wash so that the visibility is very high and properly fenced and reserve station sign board must be there so that incompetent person should not enter into that place only competent person should be allowed. So, these are meant for keeping the explosive in a secured manner in the containers and the detonator in the detonating boxes issued to the short firer blasterer for use during the shift only. So, this is reserve station over the shift explosive should not be there. Reserve station will get the explosive in the during the shift hours and before end of the shift hours the explosive remaining explosive from the reserve station must be taken out to the surface. Next is transportation of explosive. Transportation of explosive is carried out twice from the manufacturer side to the resource magazine and users magazine to the site of use. As per explosive rule transportation 
can be carried out by a road van by a railway wagon and carrying capacity for the road van is 10 ton maximum or the van load whichever is the less and for railway wagon it is 10 ton or half of the maximum wagon, wagon load whichever is the less and for this transportation license must be taken from the chief controller of explosive and after considering a number of constructional requirements chief controller of explosive will allow this one. Same vehicle cannot be used for transporting the explosive and detonators if required special vehicles may be manufactured where the separate compartments are there for the explosive and detonators. Not more than 200 detonators are transported at a time. Explosive and detonators should have their original casing during the transportation. So, it, it is not that it has to be taken out from the original casing and placed in some other casing. Vehicle maximum speed should not exceed 20 km per hour and for transporting it in the underground drive drift stop, uh, a person in its felt back can take maximum 25 kgs and that person must be a blaster or a blasting crew member which is who, who is a competent person. So, there are other n number of uh, nitty gritties are there in the transportation of explosive. Uh, it is not possible to uh, comp, uh, uh, put everything inside this lecture, but it is desired that you may carry on the additional reading in the exp, uh, on the explosive rules, explosive rules, explosive acts, these books, so that get the details nitty gritty about the transportation of explosive. So, this is the end of our topic storage and transportation of the explosive and uh, so from these two lectures uh, I, 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 I expect that you are able to uh, understand uh, how the explosive can be stored, wh there, what are the classifications of the magazines in which magazine, how, how much explosives and detonators can be stored and how the license for those can be obtained and uh, how the explosive can be transferred, what are the security requirements there that must be uh, uh, studied by you from this uh, uh, recommended le uh, literatures. Uh, so, uh, I think this is the end of this lecture, thank you.